Karim used to work at an ostrich farm. One day he was suddenly informed that his eldest daughter's hearing aid had fallen into the water, which was the most valuable possession in their household. In a rush, Karim hopped onto his motorcycle and sped home, only to find a crowd gathered around the water cistern from a distance. It turned out the children thought there were fish in the cistern. The eldest daughter had gone down to help catch them, and in the process, the hearing aid accidentally fell into the water. While scolding, Karim argued that fish could only live in clean environments not in a muddy pond like this. The children believed that by cleaning the area, refilling it with fresh water, and then introducing goldfish, they could eventually sell the fish and become millionaires. Karim, however, was convinced the cistern was blocked and that the mud would take years to dry, not to mention the water couldn't be cleaned. After some searching, they were fortunate to find the hearing aid. Karim carefully cleaned it and after putting it on his daughter, asked if she could hear. She looked towards her brother who reassuringly nodded and she confirmed she could. Karim sensed something was amiss. He asked his daughter to step back and turn around. Now she couldn't hear anything, realizing her son had played a trick. Karim stood up ready to discipline him, but the son ran away quickly and Karim's wife managed to stop him just in time. With his daughter exams approaching, Karim took the hearing aid to a doctor in town, who suggested it might be broken and recommended checking it in the city. Hearing about the high costs without insurance, Karim felt helpless. Wanting his daughter to do well in her exams, Karim asked his boss for an advance on his salary. But before the boss could respond the farm became busy. In the midst of helping out, Karim accidentally left a gate open, and an ostrich sneaked out, causing excitement among the others as if cheering for the escapee. Karim and others chased after the ostrich but it quickly outpaced them. Realizing they couldn't catch it on foot, Karim grabbed his motorcycle and tools to continue the chase. After some time the ostrich vanished, and even after searching the mountaintop there was no sign of it. Losing an ostrich worth more than his annual salary meant not only losing his job but possibly facing a hefty fine. In hopes of finding the ostrich, Karim went home to grab professional tools. He rode far out on his motorcycle and found an ostrich feather and a stray egg indicating the ostrich was nearby. Soon an ostrich appeared on the mountain, its neck stiff and its walk unnatural. It was Karim underneath, disguising himself as a male ostrich in hopes of attracting the runaway female. Covered in thick ostrich feathers and bent at a 90-degree angle, he wandered aimlessly under the scorching sun. Despite searching every nearby hill, the lost ostrich never appeared. When Karim returned to the farm dejectedly, he found his belongings thrown outside he had been fired. Fortunately, the boss didn't ask for compensation and even gave him an ostrich egg as he left. Staring at the ostrich farm where he had devoted much of his life, Karim felt the injustice deeply. Now when he desperately needed money, he had accidentally lost his job. Despite the disappointment at work, Karim still brought gifts home for his children. Seeing Karim bringing his work tools home his wife cautiously asked what happened. Karim explained that the job wasn't a good fit for him. His wife didn't say anything more. The children were curious about the ostrich egg. Karim cautioned them to be careful and showed them how to open it skillfully. First he drew a circle on the top, then gently tapped around it with a pointed tool and finally gave it a hard tap. The result was a mess, with the egg shattered and both father and son covered in it. Karim blamed the fragile shell. The ostrich egg was turned into a large serving of scrambled eggs. Despite the modest living conditions, they shared the meal with relatives and neighbors, wanting everyone to have a taste. After sending his daughter to school, Karim took the hearing aid to the city. The doctor found it was completely broken and could only be replaced. Karim had the option to wait three to four months for a cheaper one, or buy an expensive one immediately from the market. He left the hospital with no choice. A man in a suit mistook him for a motorcycle taxi driver. Seeing how easily the money came, Karim decided to take up the job. He was lucky to get a few more passengers and even found a discarded TV antenna, filling him with hope again. If he was going to be a motorcycle taxi driver, the whole family pitched in to clean up the motorcycle, fitting it with new tail lights and mirrors. However, Karim soon realized the job wasn't as easy as he thought. Besides carrying passengers, he sometimes had to transport goods. Some passengers were difficult, refusing to pay or demanding change, threatening to call the police. Karim, a newcomer from the countryside, could only flee in fear. After work, he would scavenge for unwanted items in the city. Returning home one day, Karim found his children asleep. Approaching quietly, he saw them dumping mud from inside the house. He yelled, scaring them off. He warned his son that if he caught him sleeping again, he'd be in for a beating. The son insisted on buying goldfish, arguing they could earn money for it. At night, Karim handed all his earnings to his wife, optimistically stating that at this rate, they could clear all their debts in three months and easily afford a hearing aid for their daughter. When Karim got home he found many children rummaging through his collected treasures from the city, which were piled up in the yard. It turned out the children wanted to install a door for the water sister. Then he noticed a blue wooden door he had picked up was missing. Learning his wife had given it away, Karim stormed off to retrieve it. He arrived at the house and bluntly stated that he had promised the door to someone else. He then picked up the door and left ignoring their surprised looks. The harsh sun beat down on the dry earth and the blue door weighed heavily on Karim like a thousand pound burden. Back home his wife was softly crying over the door incident. Karim's actions made his wife feel humiliated humiliated, as he had become increasingly petty since he started earning money in the city. Karim explained that they had already given away many doors and windows, and if they continued to meet everyone's demands they would end up with nothing. His wife in tears retreated to their room, while Karim humming walked among the treasures he had collected. In an effort to earn more money, 
Kareem obtained a fake permit to join a transport team because transporting refrigerators paid better. After loading up, he followed the convoy onto the road. Unfortunately, at an intersection, his motorcycle broke down. By the time he got it started again, the convoy had vanished. He searched the roads to no avail as dusk approached. Kareem had no choice but to bring the refrigerator home. His wife thought he had bought it, but Kareem explained it was just in his care temporarily and he would return it the next day. That night, they faced the dilemma of whether to keep the expensive refrigerator or return it. Kareem pondered deeply. After a night of inner conflict, he took the refrigerator to a second-hand market where the dealer offered a good price. Just as the dealer was counting the money, Kareem left on his motorcycle hoping for a better offer elsewhere. While looking for another buyer, Kareem saw ostriches in a truck watching him intently, as if reminding him to maintain his integrity. Ashamed, Kareem lowered his head and eventually returned the refrigerator to the manufacturer. The boss, recognizing his honesty, not only paid him for the transport but also gave him a generous tip and offered him a job at the factory. On his way home, Kareem saw a group of children selling flowers by the highway and realized they were his own children and their friends. He parked his motorcycle and crossed the highway, causing the children to run away in fear. Enraged, Kareem knocked over their stand and scolded them. Before he could act further, the children ran off. Still furious, Kareem intended to discipline his son with a belt, believing that allowing his wife and children to earn money was an insult to him as a man. His wife protected the children, explaining they wanted to buy goldfish. Hearing it was about the water cistern again, Kareem became even angrier and grabbed a pickaxe to smash the cistern. Before reaching the cistern, he saw birds flying out from it. The once dirty and smelly mud pond had become clear and bright, even attracting sparrows to nest. Touched by the children's efforts in transforming the cistern and seeing the dried up mud outside, Kareem fell into deep thought and ultimately refrained from destroying it. While Kareem was sorting through his collected treasures, the ground beneath him collapsed and he was trapped underneath. The children quickly came to his rescue. Kareem suffered a broken leg and a severe head injury, rendering him unable to work. As he lay recovering at home, his wife gave away all his collected treasures to make room, bringing life back to their home, but Kareem's face showed a mix of resignation and sorrow. His eldest daughter, smiling, applied medicine to Kareem's wounds, promising to buy her a new hearing aid once he recovered. The daughter comforted him saying she had replaced the battery in the hearing aid and it was working again. Kareem was relieved, however when he called out to her and she didn't respond, he realized she was just trying to ease his worries. Seeing his understanding and well-behaved daughter, Kareem was momentarily choked up, tears blurring his vision. Since Kareem's injury, relatives and neighbors had come over to help, making the house busier and livelier than before. Watching everyone work hard in the yard with laughter and joy occasionally breaking through, Kareem felt an indescribable warmth in his heart. His younger daughter was drawing on his cast while his son slept exhaustedly nearby. When Kareem woke his son for dinner, he noticed his young hands were covered in calluses, a silent testament to the hard work he had been doing in secret to earn money for the fish. The son handed over his earnings to his mother for safekeeping, mentioning he could work overtime to earn a bit more. The mother, concerned for his health, revealed she was sewing clothes for others to save money for him. Kareem witnessing this remained silent, realizing that while the family supported his son's dreams he had been the one obstructing them. During the hospital checkup, the son wanted to buy two boxes of juice but could only afford one. He handed the orange juice to his father, who questioned why he didn't buy two. The son claimed he didn't like it but after his father took a sip he passed it back and they shared it. A simple moment of father-son bonding over a box of juice. Their cousin picked them up in a flower delivery van. The son's friends excitedly told him they had bought the goldfish, now hidden under the flowers in the van. They dreamt of becoming millionaires if one fish could produce 500 offspring, and their joy was evident as they swayed to the music. During a delivery, they rushed to unload the flowers, only to discover the bucket holding the fish was leaking. In a panic to save the fish, they threw the flowers out of the van. Kareem, unable to leave the van due to his injury, was unaware of the chaos unfolding behind him. The children hurriedly carried the leaking bucket towards a nearby canal, hoping to refill it quickly to save the fish from dehydration. However, they stumbled, spilling the fish onto the ground, leaving everyone in shock. Realizing one of the goldfish had fallen into the canal, they scrambled to collect the fish, only to find the bucket had broken in the fall. Faced with despair, they tearfully pushed the remaining fish into the canal to prevent them from dying of thirst. They managed to bring back only one larger fish in a plastic bag, disheartened and with one child injured. Kareem carefully bandaged the boy's wounded finger with a piece of cloth. To lift their spirits, Kareem began to sing, and his beautiful voice eventually brought smiles to their faces. Upon returning home, the children rushed to the water cistern, releasing their single goldfish into its waters, holding on to the hope that it might breed 500 more and one day make them wealthy. While resting in his room, Kareem was visited by a sparrow that seemed to be seeking an exit. He opened the door and the bird flew away, leaving Kareem in contemplation. The ostrich farm manager brought good news. The runaway ostrich had returned on its own that morning. With the sparrow's departure and the ostrich's return, Kareem's life was filled with activity once more. Watching the flock of ostriches running towards him, he felt a deep sense of contentment. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this.